It's like, where's Waldo? Yeah, he's over there waiting for a train. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Oh, okay. Let's just get into it right now. Mark Summers, one of the greats, right here. Enjoy. I've never had many friends, especially in this business. I met Mark Summers 12 years ago. Well, he met me. I've known him my entire life, from shows like Double Dare, Unwrapped, and everywhere else he popped up on TV. He's the kind of guy who has a story for every single story. Stories, they're compiled in his off-Broadway show, The Life and Slimes of Mark Summers. He's one of my favorite people. So, we sit down here. First thing I remember, I was lying in my bed. PJ Bernstein's, the last of the true New York delis, with the last of the true TV hosts. Don't have high expectations for this. <laughs> How are things? You know, things are great. You don't know this, but you're my only friend. <laughs> I don't want to pressure you. Well, I call you often. Uh, That's very sweet. No one else does. I found the email you sent no. me. No. Yeah, no, I, I caress myself to it every night. And the way I found you was on an airplane. You found, well, you, I was, yes. <laughs> and got in touch, I guess, with your dad. Yep, first, you contacted right? my dad. And the funniest part about the email, you wrote this whole thing. I'm Mark Summers. I was on the Food Network for years. I did this show called Double Dare, which you grew up on. And my dad writes back, I checked this guy out. He's legit. <laughs> Take me through your life. Take ah. me back in time to young Mark. I was obsessed with show business at an early age, and I would sneak back down in the den and watch The Tonight Show from 11.30 to 1 o'clock in the morning. I find out that Johnny Carson started his career as a magician, so I took up magic. A lot of people started, like Steve Martin started, a lot of people started in magic. Yes. I worked at a place called the Magic Castle, sort of like of course, uh, yeah. Playboy Club for adults, but right. with, uh, with magic. Nerds. Nerds, <laughs> yes, yes. You like to see a rope trick. <laughs> <laughs> and then I became a regular at the Comedy Store in 1976. So you're doing stand up. I was at doing stand up. Straight stand up, no magic. And I'll tell you why no magic. I was opening for Gallagher at a place called the Comedy and Magic Club in uh, Newport Beach. You were open for Gallagher. Yes. He said, because uh, my name was Mark Berkowitz at the time, he said, hey, Berkowitz, you're an a-hole. Yeah. I said, why? He said, because you're doing those stupid magic tricks. How much are they paying you to open for me? And I said, 150 bucks for the week. And he said, if you get rid of those tricks, they'll pay you 300 bucks. So Gallagher, the king of novelty acts, yes, told yes. you not to be a novelty yeah, act. That's right. He said, get rid of the props. <laughs> that's all you do is that's props. That's all he does. Yeah. The way I was really making a living, though, was doing warm-ups. Yeah. Uh, people don't know this, but before every live TV show, a guy comes up and tells him when to laugh and applaud. Oh, I got to be known as the king of warm-ups. Why? Because I was able to keep that crowd going for several hours. Before we get to Double Dare, yes. let's look at a menu and order some food. Let's do it. Okay? If I might recommend. Yes. The Triple Delight is... Oh, I did that once in college. <laughs> triple Delight is a matzo ball soup with creme lock and noodles. Do you have a show tonight? Uh, yes, at 7 o'clock. Let's give you something that will g give you horrible gas. Oh, no, this is an important call, but I'm going to turn it off. Uh, I'm it's sorry. The, it's the ghost. <laughs> oh, my God. And then I spill the water. <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> I just, it's part of the act. After all your Food Network shows, yeah. did people ever confuse you for Guy Fieri? <laughs> I can't sit next to somebody eating Russian dressing. No, why? It's, my dad used to eat with his mouth open, like chew, and what? like with, with, a lot of white okay, condiment. Could I? <laughs> Societal coleslaw. <laughs> I'd like a spill free water this time. <laughs> Thank you. It's part of the act. This thing called Nickelodeon is created. They, there's, a, there's a possibility of hosting a show where you're pulling flags out of giant nostrils. Did you say to yourself, like, hell no, this is never happening? I didn't know about the mess. I fly to New York City and I go into the studio the next day and I see a guy pouring chocolate syrup on a slide. And he said, uh, oh, this is the obstacle course. Oh I had no God. idea what the obstacle course oh was. The kids are getting messy. So I had to have a little conversation with myself. I've waited my entire life to host a television show. I'm 34 years old. I'm finally getting the opportunity. But I have obsessive compulsive disorder, and there's a lot of mess. All of a sudden, the ratings are off the charts. And the show explodes, and they pick us up for another 65. Nick executives say, come here, we need to have a little conversation. Uh, we did focus groups, and the kids are upset that you don't get messy. Yeah. So from your point nightmare. on, you need to get whipped cream, you need to get clobbered. Which is a therapy that you have to like talk to yourself prior to that, like what was the process of being like, I'm someone who suffers from OCD, and I'm about to do the exact opposite of what I want to do right now. The minute that camera went down, 
I started to take off my clothes. Yeah. So I would go into my dressing room and take off all my and take a shower and then come out and put on new clothes. Yeah. Nobody at Nickelodeon had a clue. Being someone who suffered from it as well, nobody talked about it, so you couldn't understand that there was other people going through the same thing. My thoughts were the same exact thing. If you didn't do this, bad things would happen. Pretty much no help. You couldn't yeah. you couldn't go anywhere. My wife caught me. A straightening fringe on a rug. It's still emotional, man. Yeah. And she said to me, what are you doing? Yeah. I said, I have no idea. Then I went to these behavior therapy sessions where they try to retrain you so you don't do it. And uh, man, it's tough, you know? And I talk about this in the show every night. And you see it, I, I yeah. become very emotional because reliving it mm -hmm. is very tough. And people say, oh, I'm OCD because I wash my hands. I'm OCD because I like to have my clothes. No. Put in a, that's not it. That's, they don't understand the depth. You're, I would say my dad could be hanging off a cliff and I wouldn't save him until my rituals were done properly. The theme of this show, and also, by the way, of my life, is overcoming obstacles. Mm -hmm. Why, Ben, when some people are told no, and this whole show is about overcoming the word no. I never accepted the word no in my life. Oh my yes. gosh. This is like for an entire bar mitzvah here. Yes, it yes. is. <laughs> this is amazing. Enjoy. I love how you, you're saying to her as if I'm lying to you. Like, I, I told you this was great. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been on TV for? How many decades have you been in this business? 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2000s. 80 years. <laughs> the worst job I had in LA was I was a disc jockey mm. at a place called the Hungry Tiger. Yes, you were. And I hated it. I thought you looked familiar. <laughs> Freaking amazing. Huh? You know what? They knew you were tender and juicy, so mm. they wanted to give you a sandwich that matched. Oh, no. I'm love. going to put my hand up right now. <laughs> I just wondered, would you kiss me? I would never. <laughs> will grow with you. They were raised on Double Dare, and then yeah. they got older for Food Network, yeah. and then you just killed it on Food Network. Unwrapped was beating Emerald. Yeah. We were the number one show. We would enter, act back and forth. I was number one. Right. I didn't cook. You want a pickle? No, I want to uh, I want to try the Russian dressing. You know what they call that? What? Putin squirt. <laughs> when did you meet your wife? I was a page on the Mary Tyler Moore show. <laughs> Been together for five decades. Yeah, I mean, you're one of those, one of those like longevity couples through this stupid, crazy business. We grew up together. I don't know why she stuck around. I don't know Half either. the time. I'm telling you. She's lovely. Well, I've she met is, her. She's a fantastic person. Is this play, is this your swan song or are you going to keep going, you think? Look, I'm going to tell you honestly, most fun I've ever had in yeah. anything I've ever done. Yeah. Double Dare was great. Unwrapped was great. I had the best time ever, but this is about a million times better. I just can't believe that this opportunity has come up, and then I get to go out there seven shows a, a week and, and talk about my life. So why have Mark and I stayed friends over these years? It's more than just admiration for each other's work. It's admiration for each other. Many see him as that Double Dare or Food Network guy, but what they don't see is that he's the last of the greatest era, a time where you actually had to earn a place on TV. You had to be talented, seasoned, unfazed in the face of whatever comes at you. That's what Mark is. And the best part, the most important part about Mark is that he's honest and real. He's walked with giants and defeated his demons all with a mic in his hand and a grin on his face. I love this man, if you couldn't tell already. My friend and mentor, Mark Summers. Oh,